My name is Kenny Kim. I'm a lifelong martial artist, and my mission is to travel the world, find people, and share stories of how jiu-jitsu has impacted their lives. I'm headed to Birmingham, Alabama to meet Elaine, AKA Jiu-Jitsu Grandma. She has become an internet sensation as the 73-year-old who is still on the mat several times a week. She is living proof that jiu-jitsu is for everyone. We're at my jiu-jitsu gym, Gracie Baha Gym. The gym is owned by Khalifa Oliveira and he's an amazing teacher and he runs just an, a, a really good gym. He does not allow any bad language, any bad behavior, any bad attitudes. So it's a very safe gym, especially for, for women to come in. I love it. I love the community and the people have been so nice to me. The uh, professors here are a special bunch, especially Professor Khalifa. He's got the personality that's perfect for this sport. His knowledge is impeccable. We're blessed to have him and the other professors here. They make jujitsu specifically for us. They really believe in jujitsu for everyone and it truly is. The instruction is amazing. He doesn't try to get you to mimic anything that he does. He finds what works for you. Professor Khalifa has done a phenomenal job of keeping the culture clean. Like the slogan says, jujitsu for everybody. You're gonna feel like you're part of the pack. We are about to have a really good seminar. Man, I can't wait to learn some of some cool techniques and see how this goes. I wanna thank everyone to be here. I wanna thank Professor Kenny to uh, make this trip and uh, I'm sure we're gonna learn a lot of cool things. The reason we're here isn't just to share my jujitsu with you guys, we're gonna be doing a story on Elaine. Let's give her a hand, guys. <laughs> no, we all say we want to be training when we're 60, 70, and she's a testament to, you know, what jiu-jitsu can do. Anyways, guys, uh, let's get bowed in. All right, feet together. Uh, I know you guys usually want uh, run warm-ups and then go into techniques. We're gonna do a little differently, the warm-ups that we're gonna do today. Not really warm-ups, but we're gonna play a game. We're gonna play king of the mat. We're gonna try to touch each other's feet. If I touch his foot here, I win. So once we do that, winners are gonna stay on this side, losers are gonna stay on this side. And then we'll take the winners, we'll have them go again until we have one person that's gonna be King of the Mat today. You know, I wanted to do something fun to break the ice, you know, and King of the Mat was one of those uh, games where everybody's smiling, everybody's having a good time. 10 seconds, guys, 10 seconds. Somebody go for it. Go for it, go for it, get it, get it, get it. Elaine better be in the winner's circle. All right, guys, ready? Come back. Over 70 people here. First round, second round. I mean, Elaine's almost in the finals. I mean, we have a handful of people still going. I'm sure Elaine is gonna end it up on top because she's a fighter, she's a winner. I like the fighting. I know that's odd for somebody my age, but I had two older brothers and they uh, tended to do a lot of wrestling around with me. <laughs> the finals, it was a brown belt and a blue belt. But obviously a brown belt is a lot higher in rank and he's been training longer. But this isn't all jiu-jitsu. This is a little more strategy and, and speed and whatnot. Blue belt one. It's one of those things. I mean, even in real jujitsu matches, we've seen a 16-year-old blue belt tap a, you know, adult black belt. I mean, it happens. And that's the thing about this is that everybody gets tapped. King of the mat, champion. Kenny, what is that parking job? Hey, hey, I'm Asian, come on. 
Tommy. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, good How to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, I need you to hook me up with some gear. All right, we can do that. I need some shoes. Got it. And I need the best ball you got. I need the best spin ball. Fantastic. You got it, man. What size shoes? Let's start with that. Uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yep. You got it. Sounds good. Make sure that fits good. Fingers are in nice. Yeah. Thumbs in and out. Keep it loose there. Right here. Grandma going down. I'm here at Oak Mountain Lanes. We're gonna be meeting uh, Jujitsu Grandma, AKA Elaine here. We're gonna be spending some time together, playing some video games and uh, a couple of games of bowling. That's it, done. You guys got that one? I invited Elaine to go bowling to see what she's like off the mats. I'm also getting to meet her husband Warner, who is supposed to be quite the hustler at the bowling alley. Is that like a mug shot? You're okay. up. Yeah, you're up. I am? Yeah, this so you're one? on this lane, yeah. Watch you get a strike. It will be a gutter ball, I can guarantee <laughs> Yeah, the gutter. Straight down, straight down. Look at that, look at that. She's lying. <laughs> That's good. Very good. Hey, good job. <laughs> she bowls every day. She, she goes trains at jiu-jitsu, she comes, walks right up here and starts bowling. I have a bowl in <laughs> since high school. <laughs> oh, look at that form. He said he hasn't bowled in 30 years, but look, I think he's going to kick my butt. I haven't bowled in maybe 15 years or so. I used to be in a bowling league. Yeah, I had my own ball, had my own shoes, and we played every Sunday. Doesn't mean I'm good. It's like someone coming in with a brand new shoyo roll gi and brand new belt, looking good, brand new bag. It doesn't mean they're necessarily good in jujitsu, right? And so yeah, that was me and bowling. All right, so the uh, loser buys lunch <laughs> after, the, after the first game. After the first, okay. Well, we gotta see how Khalifa <laughs> bowls first. Oh uh, yeah. See, I told you you haven't lost the big right? You're putting pressure on me. <laughs> 73. I want to be like, that's my hero. Ah. Hey. Oh, hey, young man. How you doing? I'm doing good. good. I'm doing good. Khalifa just got here. I know he was teaching his afternoon class, and he tells me that his uh, white belt at bowling. You ready to bowl? I'm ready. So here's the deal. Loser is buying lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. I'm not really good at this, so I can promise a whole lot. I'm probably a purple belt level at best. How do I throw this? <laughs> Where's your hand? Black belt? <laughs> Can I say black belt? He's like, no, I'm not good at this. <laughs> and you told me you were good at this. Just lucky, lucky shot. Huh? This guy's a black belt at everything. Black belt at jiu-jitsu, black belt at judo, black belt at bowling, black belt at business. Bowling was fun, but I got my butt kicked. So time to move on. Video games it is. Just got done with bowling, video games. I'm super hungry, you know, I'm always hungry. Professor Khalifa has a student that owns an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna head over there. So we're gonna go get some uh, vino and some spaghettios. We're here in Gran Ticino in Birmingham. Owned by Frank, who was Khalifa's black belt which happens to be the owner of Gracie Baja Gym right across the street from the restaurant. So Khalif and I have known each other since 2009. We started training at one gym together. When he opened up his gym, I went over there with him to help him open up. He turned around a couple years later and helped me open up my own Gracie Baja Gym. 
I spent my day bouncing back and forth and made an intersection, going from the restaurant to the gym to the restaurant to the gym every day. But uh, one of my closest friends, amazing guy, he's done a ton for the jiu-jitsu community here in the state of Alabama. Just overall, good person, known a long time. Now you like sweet wine. I do. Like, uh, oh man, I like sweet wine too. Yeah, do like really? the Moscato. That's the kind of that's the type uh, of wine. No, but uh, I, if you remind me tomorrow, I've got a I've got a, a, an Italian sweet wine called Odessa. Okay. And uh, and you you know if you like the sweet wine, you'll like that kind of wine. So I'm talking to Lane's uh, husband Warner. I ordered a glass of wine. He asked me what it was. He told me he'll hook me up at wholesale. So I may be coming home with a box of wine tomorrow, but he really didn't say much when we we're talking about jujitsu. And as soon as we started talking about wine, I mean, it was like, it was interesting to see people come out of their shells uh, as soon as uh, a subject came out to something where it was their field. While he was talking, uh, he reminded me of my buddy Kurt in Charleston, very much like. Super excited about what we're gonna be bringing out today. So we're gonna do a couple things. Kenny's kind of changing his diet up a little bit right now. So he's trying to eat some more vegetables. So we're gonna provide him with one of our veggie sandwich, which features a portobello mushrooms, eggplant, zucchini, on a ciabatta bun with basil and arugula and a little bit of olive oil. We're also gonna do short rib stuff, cannelloni, a short rib talatelli pasta. Basically, it's like a fettuccine type noodle, but it's short rib meat that's been cooked down, all of the juices simmered in. And then of course, we had a little bit of our famous red sauce and some sauteed mushrooms and swirl it all together. Also gonna have a fried grouper sandwich that's served with uh, kind of like a spicy slaw and some pickled onions. Our chicken rollatini. The chicken rollatini is a stuffed chicken breast that's got provolone mozzarella, provolone mozzarella and Parmesan cheese stuffed in with some sun-dried tomatoes. It's rolled up, it's pan-fried in peanut oil, sliced up the medallions and served over rigatoni pasta and a wine cream sauce, and then also finish off with some sauteed mushrooms. Here. Oh my heavens. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Goodness. You mind about return thanks? So, sure, yes, okay. yes. so Father, we're so grateful for today and for the men that have put this together. And I have special blessing for, for Reggie as well as for, for Kenny and what they're doing. I ask, I ask that you bless their efforts and bless all that are involved and especially this food. We ask it through your son and in his name we pray. Amen. That's great. I love Italian food to begin with. I like the variety, love the flavor. I like the atmosphere, especially the way we did it here today because you were able to taste different foods, which tells me that no matter what I order, I can't go wrong. So I had this a really good uh, chicken breast stuff. It was amazing, it was delicious, juicy. I asked for a vegan option or a vegetable option because I'm trying to cut meat down for a little bit. And uh, I got this big, giant vegetable sandwich and it was... <laughs> Make a good chicken commercial, finger licking good. It tasted actually like meat and it was so good. And then lastly, we're gonna bring out a, um, kind of when they get closer to the end of the meal, we're gonna bring out a uh, one of our new pizzas. I just, I'm a chef here. I come up with the menu. What I like here is like the atmosphere here is like a family. Everyone here is good. Everyone loves each other about the stuff. The owners, they're very, really good people. This first time for me to, to work actually in pizza. Made it like the prosciutto pizza. Pizza sauce with like a fresh mozzarella, arugula, and prosciutto. Some shaved Parmesan and a balsamic glaze dressed on top of it. It's absolutely amazing. So hopefully they're gonna really enjoy. Wow. I've never had a pizza like this. Oh my heavens. Mm, so good, right? I get like very nervous because I'm just waiting to hear something good. Like today, it's the first time I made the pizza. So when the people was eating it, I was a little afraid, but they said it was really good. So I think we made it. I've never tasted pizza like this. Mm -mm, this pizza, you gotta try it. How was it today? It was good, man. That was... Mine wasn't good. I can tell. <laughs> this, he, his wasn't good. Oh, yeah, man. So wrap, guys. Good work. Just finished eating. Now we're gonna meet later on to go to this local place called Beer Hog, where we're gonna try some different beers and uh, it's gonna be really fun. It's 
It's been a pleasant day here in Alabama, spending the time with Khalifa, Elaine, and Werner. Can't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow's actually a big day. We're having a seminar. I'm looking forward to sharing the mass with uh, all the Gracie Baja students, with Elaine, and getting her story, a little bit more about her jiu-jitsu journey. So I'm excited to see what tomorrow holds. I teach a lot of seminars. I really enjoy it. I think uh, more than anything, like I enjoy leading people. I enjoy sharing my knowledge. The best part definitely was, was the vibe. We have a, such a great group and uh, Kenny was able to uh, interact with everybody. And uh, he started off with guard pass from De La Riva. From there, he started going a little more higher level into a really good uh, ankle lock submission. So I definitely learned a lot and uh, I can't wait to pass it to my students. Ready, one, two, three. People pull guard on me a lot, so I wind up in that position that he was teaching how to get around somebody, which was very interesting for me. And so he came over, and once I did it with him, hey, it's it's easy when you when he explained exactly how to do it. So that that was really helpful for me, and he's an amazing teacher. To me, she's fragile, so I want to give her good training. And I want to work with her, but also don't want to overpower her or, you know, hurt her anyway. She was all smiles. She actually felt really good training. She's not only older in age, but her stature, you know, at 4'11", I mean, she's a small lady. And man, she, she held her own. Somebody asked me if I ever got hurt. And the only time I've actually been off the mat is when I was hurt at my farm. It wasn't at the gym. I mean, I get bruises, you know, sore spots. So it's it's been a safe environment, even at my age. I used to practice on my husband some, but I heard, heard him one time. I've been his shoulder too far, and now he won't let me practice on him anymore. He, for a week, he walked by and said, don't touch me. I'm going gonna, gonna to bother you. Come on. I actually tried to talk her out of the jujitsu, especially after the first week. I said, uh, when we go out to eat, I want you to start wearing long sleeve everything because they're going to think I beat you up. There's black and blue marks were everywhere, but she had such a love for it. And after I met Khalifa, I, I really felt more comfortable. My husband has been extremely supportive. He's used to me doing weird things. So for him, it's like, be like, whatever. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you just go, you just go right ahead, you know. My kids think I'm nuts. My grandkids think it's cool. I don't know whether they'll ever find a person warmer than she is. She's really deliberate, very goal-oriented, very committed, but I, I really don't believe you'll find anybody that's 69 that starts to do what she does in the way she does it. You wouldn't think that that inner fire burns, but it does. It's been terrific watching her grow in the sport. She's just terrific, and obviously, I'm a little biased when it comes to that. Just thrilled that God put her in my life. So tell me, when did you start training? I started training at 69. And so that you, uh, that was four years ago. Four years ago. Right, You're 73. Tell me the story. How did you get into Jiu Jitsu? Why? I actually took a judo course when I was 20, like a six week okay. course, uh -huh. and I loved it. But when I got back to Birmingham, they didn't teach it. Okay. And at 69, I found out that Khalifa's gym taught judo, and I just called up and said, Will you let me come to your judo class? And what was his reaction? He said, Well, I, I guess. And when I went, I was the only girl. Teenage boys on one side, uh -huh. guys that looked like the NFL on the other yeah. side. Uh -huh. And I, I hung in there for quite a while, and he kept saying, Don't throw her, don't throw her. And he finally said, okay, you can throw her, but carefully. Uh -huh, and then uh -huh. he finally said, why don't you try jujitsu? It's on the next mat. He taught both of them. Uh -huh. And so I moved over to the jujitsu match. I did both for a while, but then I really, I like the fighting. The, the benefits are, are, at my age, are really good. I mean, because bone density, especially for somebody my size, it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I have osteopenia, or I did, yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last time they x-rayed my shoulder, the doctor said, man, your your bones look great. What I kind went, of drugs are you taking? All those push-ups, you <laughs> know. And, yeah. oh, so not just the push-ups, but you're literally Missing. pushing and pulling people That's right. on the mat. So the hips are a lot stronger. Building muscle at my age is hard. For people that are not training or not doing anything, I mean, do you have something that you like to tell them? You know, you have to have a certain mindset to do jujitsu. You've got to like physical contact and that fighting part. 
I don't think the good Lord expects us to just coast through the last part years of our life. We need to get and go do something. Go find something fun to do, it's something new to learn. I think it's really important at, at my age, in my 70s, trying to learn something new every week. How many people get to do that? I've got three days a week, sometimes four, that I'm learning something new. And I'm not only learning it in my head, I'm learning it physically. I'm not an athlete. My whole family was, but not me. So this is the first time I've ever been in any kind of competition type mm -hmm. thing that I now understand how they felt. Now I feel like, hey, you can do this. Certainly made me a lot healthier and more confident about what I can do. Talking to Kenny and watching him uh, teach was so amazing for me. He's a, he's a very interesting man. He's a very interesting man. We're gonna go to my house. They said Kenny's afraid of horses. So I'll see if, if he'll walk up to my horse tattoo. We have dogs and all the kids and grandkids are gonna be there. So I would like to introduce him to my family. We just got done with our Matt Chat. Seminar was amazing. Great group of people, great energy. I'm looking forward to, you know, actually seeing how she lives and what she does, uh, you know, outside of the mats. Good enough. Look, look at her horses back there. I'm not getting on a horse today. Elaine has her entire family here. I think her kids, grandkids. So let's see. To be honest, I didn't expect her entire family to be there. I got to meet all the kids and the grandkids, and she shared a heartfelt story about each one. It was really a beautiful picture of a supporting and loving family. What's next? Me. No, I'm getting oh, introduced. Right. Oh, yeah, introduced. No. Come on. Oh, I mean, you I'm, almost left him out. I mean, give me a break here. Come on. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see I didn't you. know I had to be. <laughs> Warner has a gift for me. He's got some wines that he wants to present. He's going to explain a little bit. So, okay, let's go over here. He used to be a, a wine wholesaler, right? No, we used to, we, we used to have a wine store. Wine just, store. Just, wine just store. A retail wine store. I think Kenny's a terrific guy. I'm gonna turn him into a wino. He doesn't know that yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna blend him and get him into the kind of wine I, I think he ought to drink. What do we got, Lane? You gonna go ride? We're gonna You're go ride. We're bragging about four wheelers. We've got a little dirt road we can go down. All right. Well, let's go ride. Okay, that sounds good. Nice hat. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, we're gonna go out, Kenny, and go that way. My grandson and I loved four wheel together, so it was really great to have Kenny out here so I could show him some of the trails here and we were really zooming down that road. It was fun. This weekend couldn't have gone any better. I mean, I just had a blast with her. I mean, I would never imagine that I'd be having, you know, this much fun with the 73 year old grandma. Where we're moving to, there's gonna be a lot of riding too. Oh, I gotta so. come back. You gonna yeah. invite me back? <laughs> yeah, All absolutely. Right. And I get my purple belt. Or <laughs> when whatever. you get your purple belt, I'll, I'll be here for that. <laughs> Seriously, I'll be here for that. I took Kenny out to look at my horses and he, he was a little nervous around them. You know, if you know in Charleston, I got introduced to Moon Pie and she wanted me to ride. I'm like, no, I, I'm gonna pass. But again, just looking at them close, is, they're, they're majestic animals. Washed and sprayed you, what in the <laughs> yeah. One of them was spooked though. It, it, it kind of ran away. I was like, you know what? It's a sign. I'm going to be stepping backwards, you know? Tattoo was very quiet, my black and white horse, and so that was okay. But Royal jumped a little, and, and, I, and Kenny jumped a little too when he did it, which made me laugh. But I, I tried not to. I don't want to laugh at him. <laughs> Chevy! Hey! Yeah, you, dummy. He's a great, he really is a great dog. Yeah. He, He's the kind of dog you want to get with you when you walk down a dark alley. I was skeptical when I first, when Elaine first told me what, what was going on. I'm always afraid somebody will take advantage of, of her popularity. 
So when I walked into the bowling alley, it was like, hey, Yahoo Mountain Dew, from start to finish, it's been beyond expectations. It gave her a different perspective of the kind of influence she can have. But what I've watched over the years she's been doing this is how other people have been motivated by what she's doing. And I've enjoyed watching her enjoy this. It always gives me pleasure when I see her happy. We'll be married 53 years, and that's part of my job, is to make sure that she's, you know, she enjoys whatever life she's got left, and she is thoroughly enjoying it. And you guys have made it even better than what she even expected. So I'm grateful for that. This weekend, hanging out with Elaine was so much fun. She really showed me that age is just a number. When you have a positive mindset and have goals you're striving for, you can achieve anything in the world.